Hello everybody and welcome back to Coon Valley Campers. I've got a treat for you today. We are going to be removing the bulkhead strips in the cab of this T6.1 because it is a pivotal part of converting a van and we're going to show you how to do it and Dommy's going to do all the work. Again. Again. <laughs> I just want to take a moment to say thank you to our sponsors, Howden's Modified Van Insurance. That's right, A-Plan are now Howden's. They still do exactly the same in that they will insure your van from the time you buy it until you completely convert it into a camper van and beyond. And if you want an exclusive rate on your next policy, please mention Coombe Valley Campers and they will sort you out. We are making fantastic progress with the van so far. In the last video, Domi had a very tough time removing the glass. I did, yes. <laughs> you don't want to do that again, do you? Never, never again. <laughs> never again. No, using the power tools, learning the power tools is quite tough. Getting to actually cut a hole in your van is quite tough as well. But what we've been able to do is fit the window in the sliding door, fit the beautiful safari window in the long side of the van. And further on in the week, we put the barn door glass in the, ta in the barn doors as well. So now you have full visibility and you are loving the fact that it's a little lighter and area in here, right? And we it's can brilliant. move on with the yes. next stage. The next stage to prepare your van, because we haven't even really started converting yet apart from the windows. The next stage for fitting out your van uh, is actually removing this bulkhead strip. 99% of commercial vehicles, unless ordered otherwise, will have a form of bulkhead behind the driver and passenger seats. To enable you to uh, fit most of the off-the-shelf parts and give a neat solution to your carpeting, etc., etc., you have to remove this lower strip, which bolts in the bulkhead, and these side parts. We're gonna go through that with you today, but the first thing we have to do is remove the driver and passenger seats. And it's a very simple thing to do. We have actually covered it in a previous video with the 2K T5. But as a quick rundown, the driver's seat, to remove the seat from the base itself, you have a plug, which disconnects the uh, seat belt sensor. You then have four 13 millimeter nuts or bolts to remove the driver's seat from the driver's base. To remove the handbrake, you need to remove the plastic covers. There is a 10 millimeter nut that holds the, ha that holds the handbrake cable into the actual handbrake lever itself. Remove that whilst taking note of how many threads are exposed on that uh, cable end. Then you remove the plastic trims and there are further two 13 millimeter nuts that hold the handbrake bracket onto the base and then the base can come out. You then have four 16 millimeter nuts that hold the base to the floor. To remove the passenger seat, it's easier still. The first thing you will have to do is to remove the uh, fuse and relay holder assembly from the center section. That is, uh, if I remember rightly, two T25 Torx head screws. They're T25, T27 or T30, I'll confirm that later. Once those cables are removed from the seat itself, you need to remove eight 16 millimeter nuts from the seat base and the seat itself lifts out. It's very, very simple. Once that has been done, you need to remove these side trims. The first thing to do before you remove the actual plastic trims is to remove the seat belt assemblies themselves, the top roller, so to speak. You pop off the plastic cover. The bolt inside that seat belt roller is an M10 multi spline, and then you have to remove the bottom bracket as well. That is an M10 multi spline as well. Uh, and it's exactly the same for the passenger side. You pop off the cover for the top of the seat belt, M10 multi spline bolt. Bottom is an M10 multi spline bolt, and then the plastic trims simply pull away from the body itself with clips and then you are ready to start removing the bulkhead strips with the power tools. How did you find that? It's fine. It's um, 
sometimes it's just quite awkward when you have to like bend your fingers and wrists it's quite quite hard on your wrist yeah um it's a good workout <laughs> well you've never again yeah. you've never used ratchets spanners all that sort of stuff um but in reality that stage is quite simple isn't it so yes. you needed the sockets the spanners the m uh so the multi-spline bits uh the torx attachments to either your uh, screwdriver or actually the t-handle torx drivers things like that and then just a bit of strength to pull off those plastic clips now we're into the meat of it which is actually removing this top half is very simple mm -hmm. so we've the whole bulkhead strips are split into basically two parts you've got the top halves here and here and all you need to do to remove those is to remove the series of m sorry they're m6 bolts with a 10 mil head on them and there's three per so we've already got a 10 mil out we can just whip those off the bit that's a bit more difficult and you're going to need some power tools for is the lower strip and the lower sides you can use a series of tools such as grinders sanders files die grinders all sorts of things because effectively we've got spot welds or plug welds one two three four for these side bits and they're not really welds they're kind of like brazed mm -hmm. so it's not a metal on metal weld so to speak but it's brazed and you'll see that when we start cutting it out um, but I think the first thing we're going to need to do is unbolt those top bits with the M10 bolts and then we'll get out the series of tools we'll need to chop out that so for some of you at home you might have this tool you may not uh, one tool I found really effective is called an air chisel so it's a pneumatic tool and it just chisels you can get lots of different attachments to it um, and we'll get that out and i'll show you it later but what i found is the least messy way is to actually hammer chisel all these bits out because they're only brazed it's not as strong as a weld you can actually with a sharp end to your chisel it's just sort of cut straight through it but you do have to be very careful because if you chisel too hard you'll actually start chiseling into the factory metal and that's what you want to avoid um, so what we'll do in the similar sense to the window fitting video, we shall show the different types of tools you can use, but then we'll go ahead and continue the job with the air chisel. I was hoping cool? I won't have to cut metal again. Yes, you're gonna have to cut metal again, I'm afraid, but it's, it's fairly easy. Okay. All right, you just have to make sure to wear your ear defenders, your eye protection, and definitely gloves. Um, and what we'll do as well, and again, we'll highlight to everybody at home, cover the areas you don't want covered in metal swarf and dust. So we'll get an old piece of lining carpet that we've got hanging around, we'll cover the whole dash, we'll cover the floor, uh, and anything else you don't want metal sparks going into. So I think let's do that first, let's get everything protected, let's get out the tools, and let's start hitting things with grinders and stuff. As previously explained, we've got to remove these plug welds or plug brazes, and there's a couple of methods to do it. I'm gonna show you those different methods, and then you can go ahead and choose which one you wish based on the tools that you may have at your disposal. Now, one of the things that I've seen people do, and again, very crude, but you can just grab the metal work and start bending. And then you weaken the metal around the braze, but I'm not a big fan of that, because as you can see, it's actually flexing mm. this whole pillar. There, you see that? Yeah. But as you can see here, if I keep twisting, and again, there's no real effort, it's just a set of vice grips, that will eventually get weaker, and then it will break. All right, so it's probably the least messy way to do it, but you're gonna have to work hard at it. If you do use, choose to use that method, you're then gonna to have to clean up the spot welds and any surrounding metal around it. But what I have done is move that metal work away from the areas I want to get in with either the grinder or the hammer chisel. Okay, so you can use those grips to just move the metal how you wish, but that's not the way I do it. The other method, and you're gonna need your ear defenders for this, is using like a power file. So it basically uses sandpaper on a belt. This is, I think, 60 or 80 grit on here. This one's actually powered by air. You can get them in mains powered flavor as well, so. Sorry, did I jump you? 
<laughs> yeah, very noisy. And what I'm gonna do there, and I'll um, do this on camera now. In fact, you can just start to see that metalwork started to break there. And um, what we wanna do is grind that down smooth and then you'll be able to pry it off. So I'm gonna put my ear defenders on and give it a go. Okay, you can watch from here. Cool, so there's two different methods I've shown you there. Belt sander or the air-powered die grinder with a flat disc attachment. And basically what you're trying to do is reduce the metal of this strip to the point that you can bend it um, to remove itself from that plug weld or that braze. Well, you can do the same job as that with a grinder and a flat disc on there as well. So that'll be just fine. You can do it in that method. The last method I'm gonna show you is with the Gosh, my brain's gone dead today. Air chisel. That's the word I'm looking for. With the air chisel. And I'll show you that on these bottom two. Um, and then we'll start working on the bottom part. You can see there then that any method you use is messy, is noisy, um, and can be quite destructive if you're not careful. The air chisel being the most destructive, but the quickest and the least amount of swarf created. What you really wanna do is go in after you've removed all of these bits with either the die grinder with a flat disc, the belt sander, or the normal grinder with a flat disc, just to clean these up as best as possible and then you can go ahead, spray some primer on it or some top coat just to keep that bare metal protected. Moving on to the bottom part then, if I move some of these out of the way, again, couple of methods. You can use the air chisel and you can use the grinder. Now, what you have to be aware of is that there's a huge bead of seam sealer all across the back and hidden underneath that, there are some of these brazes or welds under there as well. So you have to hit both sections. You've noticed that we've covered the van with carpet and we folded the uh, factory, rubber mat, factory rubber mat out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead um, and start hitting all of these areas with the different tools I've got so you can see how effective they are in actually removing the bits and pieces. Safety paramount important is paramount. Um, very important if you are not happy with doing this Domi has decided she's not happy using these power tools so I am doing this but she's right there waiting in the wings and watching whilst we're doing this and it really if this is the first time you've ever used a grinder maybe practice on something else first or bring somebody in who is well versed in using power tools uh, that can give you a hand failing that you can take it to a converter like us and we'd be more than happy to remove this as part of the service of converting your own van so Kind of know where your limits are and everything else, um, but also if you do want to learn how to do this, building your own camper van is a good way to actually learn and practice on those tools. So let's smash out the rest of this and uh, continue on, I think. All done. Don't you worry, I did the power tool bits and the noisy bits and everything else. Um, again, that's something to be wary of. If you are not versed in using power tools, don't have the appropriate PPE, don't let this be the first job you tackle on your own. 
Same with the windows, wasn't it? You know, don't let the first ever cut you used with a grinder be on the side of your shiny van. But we've got there, and now all the trim's back in place, you can see that it's made a huge difference, but barely any, all at the same time. So the, the old bulkhead strip came directly behind this rubber mat here, and you can just see the spot welds that I've just smoothed off with the grinder, as you saw earlier, and then I've just laid a bit of uh, automotive primer paint on there too. Put the mat down, the seat back in, the plastics back on, and again, it hasn't made a huge difference in terms of like the van itself, but visually, you've now got this plastic trim wrapping round. You don't have to carp it around that lip that was there, and you can get a really nice return on this metalwork when it comes to carpeting. What I would suggest is whilst your cab is disassembled, go ahead and do sound deadening of the cab. Maybe you want to change the floor mat, do that when it's here. Um, if you want to put a swivel base, do that whilst you're here. If you want to run your split charge wiring, which goes under the floor generally, do that. There's lots of things you can do to utilize this space whilst all the cabs out of the way. We don't have that luxury today because we've got to assemble the car so my family can get home. Um, and also we are filming a second video today, right now after we finish this one, which is how to fit a Rusty Lee double swivel base. Now this is a double swivel base Slide one. With a twist, mm -hmm. I guess, or with a slide, because it's a double swivel seat with a slider. I cannot wait to show you that. If you are watching now and you fancy watching that one, it should be up, or if you're watching this immediately as this video comes out, it's next week. However, if you're watching this later down the line, it's the next video in this series. What we have to do is modify some of this wiring. I say modify, we need to neaten up this wiring, put the swivel base in, and then we can show you how it's all done. But this is why I wanted to get the cab done to this point today. So we can film the next video and show you the results of that bulkhead strip being removed. Are you happy? Very happy, thank you. Yeah? Yeah. What's the next stage you want to do in terms of the van conversion? Um, after swivel, I would like to do sound landing uh -huh. in insulation. Um, obviously carpeting the floor, really um, eager to put the bed mm -hmm. so kids and the dog can be here rather than in the front with me. Yeah, it's a bit of a squeeze with a 40 kilo dog, the two kids yeah. and you in the cab. Um, so that's the next step. Yeah. And then, oh, we will be sign writing the van in a couple of weeks. Sign writing the van too, we'll be filming that. We've got some awesome, awesome designs by Beautiful Thomas Design, design. And Graphics in Hastings. Yes. So that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, there's lots to do, but like I said, we've still got um, wiring, plumbing, roof, lots. lots to do, lots to look forward to. And if you do like this video and you want to see the whole series, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notifications button so you will get a um, notification every time new video is uploaded. There we go. And if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you like the bits and pieces Domi and I have been wearing today, merch or purchasing some of our merch is the best thing you can do to help support the channel, other than subscribing, of course. I know I've got uh, a Run to the Sun t-shirt on, that's not one of ours, uh, but I just, I like this t-shirt. Um, we're fresh back from Run to the Sun in Newquay in 2024, so that was really, really good fun. Anyway, bulkhead strip done. Very, very happy with the results. Once your bulkhead strip is out, you can go ahead, fit your swivel bases, change seats, fit carpets, fit your camper van floor, do all sorts of stuff, can't you? Mm -hmm. So that's a pivotal part of your van conversion. Get that strip out. If you're not confident, get somebody else to do it and continue the conversion. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for observing. <laughs> Thank you for helping <laughs> and removing all this stuff. Yeah, it's good. Uh, and look forward to the next one where we'll be uh, fitting that double swivel with a slide based from Rusty Lee. See you on the next one. <laughs>